Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, Power carrying the KPLO payload to a ballistic lunar transfer orbit. So we are beginning to throttle down the engines on the first stage to prepare for a period known as Max Q. Max Q. And there was Max Q. So the engines are coming back up to full power. Uh, we have three events coming up in quick succession in about a minute. Uh, first up is MECO, that stands for Main Engine Cutoff, followed by Stage Separation, and then SES-1, which stands for Second Engine Start-1. Main Engine Cutoff is where the first and second stages, oh, excuse me, engine Main started. Engine Cutoff is where the nine engines on the first stage will shut off in preparation for Stage Separation. That is where the first and second stages will separate from one another. The first stage will make its way back to our drone ship to attempt its sixth landing. And the second stage will continue with SES-1, which is where the Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage will start up and continue to propel our KPLO satellite to its desired orbit. Those events are coming up in about 10 seconds. For now, we are enjoying some excellent, excellent views of Falcon 9 during its ascent phase. Main engine cut off. Stage separation confirmed. MVAC ignition. We saw the confirmation of stage separation and uh, the ignition of the Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage. Bearing separation confirmed. And off they come. So uh, those two fairing halves are now falling back to Earth. Uh, those are the fourth flight for both of these fairing halves, and we are going to be attempting to retrieve them with, our, with the help of our recovery vessel, Bob. So we're coming up on T plus four minutes into the mission. We have a couple of views on screen. On the left-hand side is a view of that first stage uh, continuing to make its way back to Earth. And on the right-hand side is a view of the Merlin vacuum engine. Uh, on the opposite side of that engine is uh, the second stage and uh, the KPLO payload. So things continuing to uh, go smoothly after liftoff, the next major milestone for the first stage occurs uh, around the T plus six minute and 50 second mark. It's going to be the first of two burns. A nominal trajectory. Uh, the first burn is going to be called the entry burn. This is where we will relight the center engine, center uh, engine number nine, followed by engines number one and five. That way we'll have three M1D engines helping to slow down the first stage as it passes back into the Earth's atmosphere. The engine that you see on the right-hand side of the screen is optimized to perform in the vacuum of space. It can produce over 220,000 pounds of thrust, as opposed to the engines on the first stage, which are optimized to perform at sea level. Those can produce 190,000 pounds of thrust apiece. This view that you see on the left-hand side of the screen, that's actually inside the inner stage looking up. Uh, we mentioned those pusher rods uh, and that we saw a, a glimpse of those uh, with that video. Uh, you can also see some action on the left-hand side of the screen. We see some bursts of white gas. That is nitrogen from our attitude control system. That in conjunction with uh, those hypersonic griffins that you see on screen. We see two of them. There's actually four at the top of the first stage. Uh, those help to guide and steer and orient the first stage back to its targeted landing zone. Uh, today it's going to be the drone ship just read the instruction. We are going to be listening here in about 20 seconds for a call out called SECO that stands for Second Engine Cutoff 1. The engine that you see on screen Thank will shut you, off its uh, engine. Yeah, and then shortly after that we'll listen for a call out for a nominal orbital insertion. 
Uh, that means that the second stage is entering its coast phase and is exactly where we want it to be before it relights its engine a little bit later on in the mission. I'm back shut down. Nominal orbit insertion. And there was the call out for nominal orbital insertion. The second stage is coasting for uh, a bit longer. So we are about 40 seconds away or 30 seconds away from that entry burn on the first stage. Stage one, FTS has saved. Stage one, entry burn startup. And those engines have indeed relit. Uh, the first stage is currently slowing down before hitting the denser parts of the Earth's atmosphere. This burn is expected to last for about 30 seconds. Awesome, so that burn is in the books. We have one more to go on the first stage. That's a landing burn that's gonna happen. Start of terminal guidance. In about a minute, KPLO's final destination will be the moon or a lunar orbit to be more precise. Traditionally, if we wanted to send something to the moon, we would launch the payload into a lunar transfer orbit or a translunar injection orbit. A lunar transfer orbit has an apogee altitude of approximately 385,000 kilometers, which is roughly the distance between the moon and the Earth. And uh, we got views back of our first stage as it attempts its sixth landing on our Stay drone ship. And we can start to see the drone ship. Sometimes the video cuts out. Uh, we'll wait for confirmation of whether or not the first stage was able to land. But for now, we know that the second stage is uh, in its coasting orbit. So we haven't heard confirmation of the first stage, whether it was able to land for the sixth time. Uh, but the second stage is now embarking on its coast phase between the first and second burns of the MVAC engine. After the coast phase, we'll light that MVAC engine for a second time, a bit after the T-plus 34-minute mark. Stage landing confirmed. Uh, and before we head off, uh, we did get confirmation of the first stage landing. So we'll see you back here in about 20 minutes. In the meantime, enjoy the Space Tunnels. Welcome back to the webcast of the Falcon 9 mission. So again, we are waiting for our second stage engine to reignite. Um, and, uh, and then after that, we will shut it back down for another short coast phase before deploying our KPLO payload. It doesn't look like we are gonna be getting video views of the second stage. So we'll be, we'll be waiting for the call out of SES2. Nominal orbit insertion. Uh, so we were waiting for SCS2 and SECO2, but uh, we got an even better call out, which is nominal orbital insertion. So, but we will come back just before payload deploy, currently scheduled to occur around the T plus 40 minute mark. And we'll see you back here in about four minutes. Welcome back to our launch coverage. Just one more major milestone coming up is the deployment of the KPLO payload from Falcon 9's second stage from now. 
KPLO, deploy confirmed. And there you have it. Confirmation of successful separation uh, of KPLO from Falcon 9 second stage. Uh, KPLO still has a bit of work to do over the next four and a half months before getting into a lunar orbit, but we do wish it safe travels. For us here at SpaceX, that is going to wrap up our webcast coverage. And of course, all of our viewers, thank you for joining us, and we will see you next time.